Hello students. So today we begin with the Newton's first law of motion that is basically related to the law of inertia that we have already learnt before. So the Newton's first law of motion will tell us and enlighten us as to what is the basic thing that we need for any object to move or if it is moving then what is it needed to keep it in the same state that is what we'll be discussing about in the Newton's first law of motion. Now let us first discuss about the Newton's first law of motion. So I'll try to explain it using a video. Try to see the video. So the video will tell you with some animations that how we can understand about the Newton's first law. So this is Professor Mack. Professor Mack will tell you about how to understand about the Newton's first law of motion. Yeah. So let's observe the video very carefully. So first, he's introducing about what exactly he's going to discuss. So here is Professor Mack here. Now let's move forward from here. So what is the expression of a force? So forces act on objects. So forces are the things with which you pull and objects on which the forces act. So on this basis, the Newton's first law of motion is actually based on. So let's try to do an experiment. What he does is that he's taking an object at this place. It's a long table on which it has been kept. Right? So what is going to happen now? Since this object is not moving at all, it is kept at this particular place. And you can see that the table is completely smooth. So what should happen as a result? But the object is not moving on its own. So what can happen as a result? Let's see. The object will have definitely some amount of mass. Therefore, there is going to be some weight as well. But the object is not falling downwards. But there should be some balancing force acting as well. Now let's try to observe the object very carefully. What do we see? We see that the object does not move on its own. Therefore, if we observe from this, that we can see that even though the object does have mass, it has forces acting on it, but the object is not moving. There is a gravitational force, which is nothing but its weight. And the surface of contact, that is this table, is also exerting a force in the upward direction, which is nothing but the normal force. So you have a normal force and then you have a gravitation force. Both these forces are acting on this mass, but still the object is not moving. That means, like we discussed, these two forces should be balanced forces. So we need to see that why does the object does not move. So how to understand about that? We need to give it some kind of a force. Only then the object can move. So let's see if we can apply some force using this. So if we do apply some force using this, then the object may move. So as we see, this applied this force, the surface being smooth, the object has started moving. And it will continue to move because we have a very, very long table out here. We can see that the surface being smooth, the object continues to move. So the object does not stop at all. Since it continues to move, it will continue to move unless you apply an external force. So what happened as a result? We applied the force, this applied the force here, even though the gravitational force and the normal force were acting, but the piston applied this force on this mass that resulted into the mass moving in the forward direction. So this is an unbalanced force. Only under the existence of this unbalanced force did this object move. And here you can see that this is, these are all the forces. So that was the free body diagram. Now that force only acted for a small instant of time. There are no other forces that are acting. These two are balanced forces. That's the reason. Since no other force is acting, the body will continue to move at a uniform rate. 
this is what is known as a uniform motion here the object will continue to move at a uniform rate without there being any hindrance as we assume that this surface is completely smooth so you may say that there are forces acting on this object but still it is moving at a constant rate the reason being the forces that are acting are not acting along the direction of the force direction of motion that is the reason this object will continue to move because there is no net force acting along the direction of motion so this tells us about the newton's first law of motion what does it say that even though that you have these two forces since these two forces are not resulting into motion only one force resulted into the change change in state of the object so this is what is meant by the newton's first law of motion so if you want i can explain it again so as you can see the object is moving under the existence of a of no force since the surface being smooth the object will continue to move on its own unless you apply an external force to stop it mind you it should be an external force So what did we learn here? We learned about the Newton's first law of motion. So what does it say? So every object persists in a state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless it is compelled to change that state by forces that act on it. So these objects will move only when there is an external force that acts on it. So the first law deals with the inertia of motion of the body. so a body which is at rest will remain at rest unless you apply an external force on it so this is the inertia of rest that we had discussed similarly a body which is moving with uniform velocity will remain in that state of motion uniform motion mind you unless or until you apply an external force on it so using this if you say that f is equals to m into a we know that this is the expression of force so f is equals to mass into acceleration So if I say that the applied force is zero, that implies that acceleration produced is also going to be zero, because mass is not equal to zero. We cannot assume the mass to be equal to zero. Hopefully, you understood about the first law of motion. In our next lecture, we'll discuss about the Newton's second law of motion. Thank you. So, students, we learned about the Newton's first law of motion. that is when there is no external force acting on an object in that case the object will continue to be in its own state only when you will have an external force only then the object is straight is going to be changed so that we'll learn in my next topic that is the newton's second law of motion so stay tuned